So we open up this week's edition of Impact Wrestling again with uh, Hulk Hogan. This was all about hyping up the main event of Slammiversary. You had Sting coming out talking about the stipulation. He did a pretty good job of selling the stipulation as well. You have Bully Ray coming out to kind of stir the pot a little bit, saying that it was not Hulk Hogan's fault, not Sting's fault, but it was his fault, and that he still loves Brooke Hogan who was out there, kind of fucking with the Hogan family and Sting a little bit there. The thing that made me laugh straight away was when Hogan and Sting went to the brain. One minute they were feuding, next minute their brains were thanking each other, sucking up to each other. Uh, it, that was kind of like, okay, proving how big of a part of a company they are. The Buddy Ray still loving Brooke. Maybe there's going to be her joining the Ace and Eights. But yeah, it, it set up with what jet to come at some of us. I believe uh, Full Killer or Del X Man said it best. I can't remember which one. Uh, no one does despicable like Bully Ray. I believe that was Full Killer on Twitter. I've got a question actually. Where's Abyss at? He had this big return a couple of weeks ago and he, we haven't seen him since. Where is he at? What's going on? I'm sure we see him later in the night. Uh, yes, as Joseph Park. Suicide versus PC Williams versus Joe Ryan with Kenny Kong commentary to get into the match of Slammiversary, which. We already knew who the fucking winner was going to be because they'd already announced it. There's a picture online of a match with Suicide in it. So I didn't give a shit about the match because I already knew who was going to win. I already knew Suicide was going to win the match. So who gives a shit? I'm still a bit put off by these triple threats each week. But at the same time, it was a good exhibition match, which I'm looking forward to seeing in the future again. So for that reason, I enjoyed what we were given. I just want to say something here about TNA and wrestling in general and the way they manage their talent. Joey Ryan replaced Zima Ion, who has appendicitis, by the way, and apparently he might have a tumor in his colon, and he's had to raise $30,000 himself for an operation because TNA and WWE do this as well. They don't. TNA hasn't paid him enough to get his own medical care, to, to buy, to get his own medical care, and WWE don't give their people health insurance. You know, so why, what happened to, like, you know, actually giving the people that were working you, like, you know, health insurance and simple stuff like that, like normal companies do? I just don't get it. Anyway, you have Wes, Wes Briscoe announces that he took out uh, Alex Silver and wants to be in this uh, gut check tournament. And, you know, it would have been nice if we could see a beat down, but that led to Magnus coming out and uh, challenging uh, Wes Briscoe to a match at, the, at that time. The two things I'm going to say is that the eight and eights, you don't think of the winning matches, you think of the beatdowns. And the fact you skipped a beatdown would have put, flowed onto this match. I think that was a bit of a shame that he missed it out. But West Briscoe wanting to be a part of the gut check because he was in it originally made sense. And plus, when when Magnus came out, the eight and eights do what they do best, flee the ring. Pretty much flee the ring to, to what one person Yeah, is what eight and eights do best. Then we get Magnus and Wes Briscoe as a match. It wasn't really about the match, really. Ace and Eights got DQ'd and beat down Magnus. And then Samoa Joe comes out to clear the ring, and he's returned now as uh, one of those fallen heroes, so to speak. So it looks like Samoa Joe and Magnus could be reunited as a tag team temporarily to face the Ace and Eights, possibly at Slammiversary. Even though I enjoyed Magnus might work during this promo this time, the fact that he's signing back for Samoa Joe, we do need the tag teams, we do need someone to go up against the Ace and Eight, probably there's another match somewhere down the line. So for this, at least it put Magnus on TV in a positive role. And he could be involved in Slammiversary, who knows. Uh, Mr. Anderson versus Kurt Angle. Seen this match way too many times now, uh, you know, I wasn't surprised Angle kicked out of the mic check. I wasn't surprised that the match went down the way it did with it being the SNS. I just, I wasn't interested in this match. I've just seen it way too many times now. And the thing is, you can see how Teenage Booking is because the only way that Anderson beats Angle normally is by an interference or a DQ. Yeah, and that's pretty much what happened there. We had AJ Styles coming out to the ring to distract Angle to allow Anderson to get the ring. They were kind of, they were teasing throughout the night, weren't they, that AJ Styles is going to join the Ace Nation. You had Taz going to hug AJ. He didn't hug him back. You had all this stuff, you know, AJ Styles walking out the same place as the AJ, as the uh, Ace and Eights walk out. They really were teasing that AJ Styles was going to be part of the Ace and Eights tonight, which was going to lead up to our main event. They did this quite well, I thought. The thing that really threw me is that throughout the night, like Dan said, and also the backstage segment with Buddy Ray, Bad mouthing d but complimenting his other members. And the fact that he goes on about AJ, you can sense like, oh, we expect this so much that something was yet to come. Yeah, we had a backstage segment with Taryn Terrell. Uh, she returned in a backstage segment to fuck up Gail Kim. They're going to be having a match at Slammiversary, so this is a decent segment. It would have been good to return Taryn Terrell like, in an in-ring segment, but 
a backstage segment and, you know, knockouts trying to kick the shit out of each other. Hell, it's better, better than anything we get in the WWE, I'll just say that. Gail Kim putting herself over the way that she should, that she's the best knockout, blah, blah, blah. The Terrell thing, at least when she wrestles next, I'm sick of seeing her roll up. So, welcome back, but please, when you face Gail Kim at whenever... Do it properly. I would like to see a finisher. That would be yeah, not, I mean, yeah. one of the one of the best ways to relate to a wrestler, even a female wrestler, is by their finisher. Generally, um, who will James Storm tag team partner be? We had low stereotypicals on commentary, uh, which was kind of pointless. Was it me, or did this segment just drag out longer than it really should have done? You had Wet Dream Team come out and talk. You had Bad Influence come out and talk. You had Shark Boy making a surprise return and talking. You had Robbie E come out and talk until we got to. Gunner coming out, taking both Sharp by Robbie out and becoming the partner. It just seemed like an unnecessarily dragged out segment to me that was just there to get all of the tag teams involved, even though Chavo and Andes didn't really say anything, probably for the best. I agreed bringing out the people who are involved in the match. They tried to tease numerous opponents. Hogan announced Sharp Boy's possible return. But the way it cancelled down, Gunner with the what is it with beards? And it they basically he's joining and I think that's a good way to bring Gunner back. You put him into a positive role, signing him with James Storm. I think that was good for Gunner. Hey, uh, Eric Young would be proud of that beard. So it looks like James Storm and Gunner will be teaming up. A bit of a weird team, but there we go. Um next week it's gonna be Sting and Joseph Park versus Bully Ray and Devon, even though you could tell Sting wanted Abyss. Yeah, the way he was saying it, like how you've been really gonna drag us on till the end. Can you go and speak to Abyss? You, we all know that Joe's Park is Abyss, and that's why he chose Joe's Park. So when the blood comes that Sting is famous for, out comes Abyss. Indeed. Velvet Sky versus Mickey James for the Knockouts Championship was our next match. Um, this this was somewhat interesting, which is the, deep, this, the Knockouts division really hasn't been that much lately. Um, not that that great of a match, really, um, but you basically had Mickey, J Mickey James praying on the knee to get the victory. She didn't turn heel or anything, but it seemed like in this segment that she would do whatever it took and get the business done to win the Knockouts Championship, but she's done. And to be honest, I'm glad that Mickey James has won the Knockouts Championship, and I hope a character change or a heel turn is somewhere in the works. As if we've just been waiting for that for so long now. The thing is, we were trying to build up their friendship, make it look like it's going to be a nice, mm. clean match. Velvet wanted to prove herself. Mickey James wanted her to be in full shape and that. So we're teasing the whole face and continuing. But now we've got a new knockout champion. As long as we don't get James and Gail, I'll be happy. Uh, okay. We probably won't be getting that because we're going to be getting Gail Kim and Terrence Terrell at the pay-per-view. And apparently that's going to be a last knockout standing match. It'll be interesting to see if Terrence Terrell can actually work a last knockout standing match. As uh, Madison Rain proved that she couldn't, uh, in, I believe, in 2011 in her match against Mickey James. Uh, the main event of the evening, which will be what everyone talks about probably from this review, will be the caption of the title of this review. AJ Styles' decision. It seems like we get one of these every week with AJ Styles, but they were doing a good job teasing that AJ Styles is going to join the Ace and Ace. They're about to patch AJ into the Ace and Ace when Angle comes out and talks about AJ's TNA legacy. And it really looked like for a minute that AJ Styles is going to join the Ace and Ace. He even drunk the beer. He takes out Angle with the hammer. And then he takes out Aces and Ace with the hammer to show that he is a lone wolf. And I really like the way... How TNA did this because for a minute there, I was really believing that AJ Styles was set in stone in the Ace and Eights until they did that swerve and made him a loner, which is definitely the right way to go with the AJ Styles character and one of the most compelling angles on TV right now, in my opinion. The way they were pushing this, it was nicely done. They had the whole teasing of AJ and Angle, Angle get involved, Buddy Ray bringing himself up by contract shake, giving him a hug. You've never drunk before, drink with us, and all this. And Anderson putting it on. So they were given it, and plus we only had about a minute or two left of the show. Mm. So you really thought, oh, this is it, he's in the ace and eight. And the attack happened, which definitely, like Dan said, puts him on his own, which does leave us wondering how they're going to build him up once they face each other at um, Slammiversary. Yeah, so difficult to really pinpoint overall thoughts on the show. It was a really nice main event. I felt they built up to that main event very well. There was a couple of interesting things in this show and a couple of things that I'm just a bit tired of, like Hogan opening the show again, Angle and you know Anderson again, you know, Aces and Eights scattered around the show again. I think we need some new life in this team. I mean, Angle and AJ are going to be fighting at the pay-per-view again. I just think that right now, that while the shows aren't bad, we need some new life in TNA right now. We need just something new and different and cutting edge because 
Right now, I just don't think we're getting it. And that's probably one of the reasons why the ratings are really low right now, TNA. The one thing I'm going to say about this is that we've got the uh, Go Home Show next week. So we've got to see what final things they can pump up next week. Make sure they cover each match. They started this week with the tag, the AJ stuff, and the Sting announcement stuff. So I think they did well. And plus, for the Activision... Option C is still around. Yes, and we have six matches for the pay-per-view. That's five. That's six. Um, you should have filled in from a botch there, MJ, like Sting filled in for his own botch in the opening promo segment. I have been Mr. Park, and this guy sitting next to me has been NJ, of course. What's up? We are the British Fist. Catch it! Thank you very much for watching this review, and goodbye. As you heard last week, Worthless Mortals, my answer to Fourth Dimension Ball Killer's challenge was yes. I left him standing there surprised, lost of words. Well, this week, while he's out there training his fucking ass off, I'm going to be just showing you what I've done in the past and what is yet to come. Roll the fucking video and Worthless Mortal, believe me, the best is yet to come.